fun dinner party wars. They're wrecking everything. Three couples compete to outdo each other in the ultimate dinner party showdown. <laughs> Two experts judge their dinner dues. Beer and chowder is good. And don'ts. I see what they're trying to do, but it's just badly executed. They share one goal, to be dinner party war champions. Oh! Are we gonna force it, Ron? First warriors are Richard, an electrical engineer, and Sandra, a disabilities employment counselor. This Dutch Newfoundland duo have been a winning combo both inside the kitchen and out for 15 years. I think we just work great as a team. Mag ik een biertje alstublieft? That means can I have a beer, please? Yes. We really read off each other. We work well together. Cheers. Cheers. I think our secret weapon will be our entire menu. We're trying some dishes that I don't think anyone will have experienced. We're going to win because... He's smart and I'm sassy. Next up are Renu, a customer service rep, and Sharon, a dental assistant. These best friends have made a powerful party force since they were teenagers. We basically have known each other for our, at least 10 years or more. They're perfectly cooked. Oh my god. We love to cook and entertain. All right, let's do this. One, two, three. We're upbeat. We compliment each other amazingly, I think. We're small, but we got muscles. Our last duo is Jason and Reshma, both in sales at the same company. These party warriors are just as likely to battle each other as they are their competition. I'm going to be the captain of this team. We're going to go with my choice. I don't think so. As long as you do what you're meant to do, everything will work out fine. We bounce off each other well. What do you think is going to stress you out the most about this whole experience? You. It could be feisty. I get one of them out now. No, 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 not like that. Well, that's tough. Just asking. Excuse me, it's mine. There could be a few fireworks, but I'm hoping for the best. These couples will meet for the first time when they host each other over the course of three competitive dinners. They each get $350 to spend and three hours to deliver. Only one couple can win, and that's up to our judges. Order up. This is Chef Corbin, our executive chef, who always brings his passion for food perfection to the table. He'll be judging the couples on menu selection, food presentation, and of course, taste. And this is Anthea Turner, the UK's perfect housewife, top-selling author, and our ultimate party hostess. She'll be judging the dinner parties on style, etiquette, and entertainment. They'll view each saucy detail using robot cameras. At stake, $1,000 of kitchen goodies and the grand honor to be named Dinner Party War Champions. Day one, dinner party one, and the judges drop in on Richard and Sandra's menu preparations. Hello. Hey, Hi. how are Hi. you? The first feast begins with three hors d'oeuvres, including smoked herring on pumpernickel, a selection of three different Gouda cheeses, and bitterballen, a seasoned, breaded, and deep-fried minced beef meatball. For the appetizer, there's Nova Scotia fish chowder with chives. For the main course, there's an Acadian tortillere, a classic spiced minced beef pie, served with nasi goreng, an Indonesian rice dish, and sautéed fiddleheads. The meal ends with a trio of desserts, including Dutch butter cake, stroop waffles, warm waffle syrup cookies, and poffer teas, tiny pancakes dusted with sugar. We're doing a fusion between my Dutch heritage and Richard's Acadian heritage. So what's yeah. on the menu? Well, we've got some meat pies. Is it made? Uh, it hasn't been assembled yet. We've got the filling made. And I'll taste it. So I can taste the savory in there, but I think you blended it a bit too much. So maybe saute some onions separately, fold them in, and okay. then you can give it a little bit more texture so it's not so cat food-like. Okay. I was born in Newfoundland, right. so we're planning to do the uh, the screeching in ceremony. I don't know if you're familiar with that. No. Kissing the cod. Kissing the cod, shot of rum. Where is it? I want to try it. That's not cod. We couldn't get a cod, so we're kissing well, the mackerel. They don't look so bad when they're frozen. First, you kiss the cod. Yeah, you have to kiss it first. You kiss him first. You kiss the cod. Mwah. Drink that. Good. <laughs> Down it. All of it. 
While the hosts prep, a little more salt. The robot cameras are set to record the dinner table action. And then it's private access only with the confessional cam, where the evening sins are truly revealed. The judges are also prepped to catch all the angles of the dinner party adventure. Beer in chowder is good. I bet it is. If it's a nice, thick, creamy chowder. <laughs> And with the last kiss of the mackerel, the hosts go to greet their first guests, Renu and Sharon. Hi. Hello. How are you doing? Come on in. In case you're wondering, we're having Dutch food tonight. I like oh, it. Is. Look at that. What do you think? I think it looks good on you. <laughs> <laughs> They're hard to walk in. <laughs> then the next couple, Reshma and Jason, arrive. Hello. And the party is underway. So this is what we call Dutch Yenever. It's basically a gin that's flavored with juniper berries. I like gin. Richard seems to be mixing a pitcher of his own savory chaser, a flop sweat daiquiri. Do you think he should dry off? You have to consider here is your guests. It's strange. This is a man who is openly sweating in a shirt, which shows a lot of perspiration. There must be something else in your wardrobe, a white shirt, a, a black shirt, a, in fact, anything. Yes, it's warm. Yes, you're going to sweat, but at least go and change your shirt. And regardless of the ever-moistening host, the hors d'oeuvres are served. Smoked herring on pumpernickel, three different Gouda cheeses, and bitter balling. That is the only thing we didn't make from scratch, because they're very, very intricately made, and uh, you need special equipment to make them. Don't tell them that. She didn't know I thought they made those from scratch. She did as well. No, she hasn't. So she well, has made them. not one single hors d'oeuvre, not one single well, appetizer you know, I, has she made. I thought they had made them. I like the cheese. I Love the cheese. The cheese. Well, herring is not for me, but it's a personal thing that I just don't like smoked fish. I love herring. The problem with this smoked fish is I think that it's too much smoked fish with too much bread and it's dry. It almost needs something creamy or saucy to go with it. Let's try the, uh, the balls. These are little fried meatballs. Mm -hmm. mm, I don't mind these. These are nice. I they like them. They better than they look. She didn't smoke the fish. She didn't make the pumpernickel. But she puts a mean flag in a cheese cube, I'm telling you that. Everything was just very basic for me. Not There was no wow factor to it. The bitter ballad was actually quite nice. Um, I didn't really like the fact that she said that she didn't make it. Then Richard reveals his second clammy surprise of the evening. I was born in Newfoundland. So they have a, a ritual there. I don't know if you've heard it, called screeching in. Favorite part of the night? We're coming up right here. So it's basically um, a ceremony where you become an honorary Newfoundlander. Part of the ceremony is um, you have to kiss a cod. Right. So, oh my gosh. Oh my goodness. Can you use a tongue? Oh sure. My goodness. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> Are we going to pass it around now? Fish, I don't mind. Uh, I've, I've kissed a few fish along the way. I don't like anything with eyeballs on them because it kind of freaks me out. <laughs> Give it a nice big one, baby. Juicy smooch. What other Dutch slash East Coast treats does their party promise? Here's the chowder. I want to look at this. This is important. Would you have it thicker than that? Absolutely. But you should just put a little bit of flour in there or mash some of the potato in there and thicken it up. And thick or thin, the appetizer is served. Nova Scotia fish chowder with chives. Bon appetit. That is lovely. Ooh. That fish smells like a hot can of sardines on the pavement for a month of July. It's not good. It's runny and it's stinky. You no, know, it, it, it's not as bad as it smells, but it's just a shame it's runny. Charter should have big chunks of vegetables, chunks of potatoes. Corn. Some hardiness, corn. 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 Carrots. Corn. Celery. It's watery and it's fishy. It's actually a chowder is not a difficult thing to do. Apparently it is. So the fish chowder that I had was was okay. Almost too too watery for, for my liking. And while everyone might think the soup is too thin, Renu decides to bring it up with the chef. The creaminess might be a little watery. 
Yeah, I found that too. Yeah, right. I don't know. I don't know if it's just me. Do you think it's appropriate to be giving tips on how to make a better chowder? From a point of etiquette, maybe this is not what you do. I think it needs a little bit of richness. It, it, you know, it needed to reduce a bit longer, I think. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. From what I've experienced, it's usually a little bit more rich and creamy. It's not as watery. She was only saying what I was saying in here. She absolutely was. Out at the stove, Richard is wrestling with the first part of the main. Make it hot. Don't put them in cold. But now what's going to happen is, because he didn't heat the pan properly, and he's overmixing them like he's making some sort of batter, by the time they get heated up, they're going to be falling all apart. Oh, look at the little ants. And the manhandled main course is plated and served. Acadian tortier with nazi garang rice and sautéed fiddleheads. Thank you very much, sir. I really like this. I now want to try fiddlehead. It's like licking the lawn. I don't like it. I don't like it at all. Let's try the rice. All right, let's go to Indonesia. The rice, it looks like it came from a Chinese food buffet, all you can eat. It's overly cooked. It's mm -hmm. packet rice machine. It's just been baked a little bit too long. It needs more juice. Oh. I think he's ground the meat so much, it's now powdery. So how would you do this dish? I wouldn't grind the meat as fine. OK. I'd add more vegetables. I'd add some fresh herbs, maybe some stock. Best thing on that plate for me Pastry. I love the pastry. Mm -hmm. It's the innards that I don't like. The pie was, it was good, it was flavorful. The rice was edible. I've never had Phil had before, but um, I probably won't after this experience. As Richard clears the main from the table, Sandra furiously plates her medley of desserts. Dutch butter cake, warm waffle syrup cookies, and tiny poverty pancakes. That looks pretty good. Thank you so much. These pancakes are good. Thank you. Mmm. Mm. There's stuff in the middle. How are these little almond cakes? These are a bit dry. Mm. The flavor's nice. These are pretty good. It's all dry. I don't mind it. Best thing we've had all night. I'm not going to complain. Yeah. I think if there's one word that encapsulates this dinner party, it's dry. The little miniature pancakes, those were awesome. I like that. For dessert, basically, it tastes more like pancakes. So it's more like breakfast to me. And the party comes to a close. Cheers. Thank you Cheers. so much. Cheers to that. Cheers, Cheers. Cheers guys. Look at this. Oh, we've kissed and fish. Interaction, yes. It was good. You're right. Hello. Hi. Hi. How was it? Where I'm from, food is good food and conversation is good conversations. Uh, I'm used to a better quality, so I'd say I put it down to the quality. So you're going to do a lot better? I would like to think so, yes. What's this? This is our special invite to our 70s party. Were you born in the 70s? No. no. I'm really looking forward to a 70s party. Having said that, you better get it right, because I know the 70s. Day two, dinner party two, and the judges head in to inspect Renu and Sharon's 70s-themed soiree. Hey, girls. Hello. Hey. The meal starts with hors d'oeuvres of self-serve bruschetta and steamed mussels in a white wine sauce. For the appetizer, there's a classic chicken soup with vegetables and thyme. The main course features chicken fettuccine with basil and portobello mushrooms. And for dessert, there's a sweet and sour lemon tart and chocolate fondue with an assortment of fruits. Pasta set to boil. Some people like it al dente, some don't. It's a bit gloopy. How do you stop pasta all sticking together? It starts with a hot pot of boiling water with salt. I put a good amount of salt in, bring it to a rolling boil, you throw in your pasta, you leave it mm -hmm. for about a minute. Don't touch it, don't do nothing. And then after a minute, you stir. You know what my grandma taught me? Throw it on the wall, if it sticks, it's done. Exactly. <laughs> and it works. It, it does work. 
<laughs> Stick to the vent. It's not ready. So, have we done with food now? We are. Follow us. Now, list all the games that you've got. Depending on pantyhose, that's for appetizers. <laughs> we've got 70s dance move charade dance, and we've got a fondue mystery. Dependent on how the party is going, pop the right game in at the right time. Yeah. The most important thing to do is listen to your audience. All right. Know what you think they want. Okay. And give it to them. Sounds good. <laughs> As the judges take their place, the hosts are trying to get the jump on their hors d'oeuvres. They've cooked the mussels already? Mussels is a dish that you can't do ahead of time. They get cold, and cold mussels cold are Cold mussels good. are horrible. They no. really are now. There you go. Shake it. They're not making them? They're oh, what? Nice girls. I thought bruschetta means that they're oh, on the bread ready to go. Oh, I see. So really what we have is bread with a tomato topping. Oh, it's going to be messy. I don't want to be doing that sitting down. And the first guests arrive. A fully 70s decked out Sandra and Richard. Oh! Oh! oh so nice. Nice. How are you? Well, they get the award for being good guests. Look at this. And the second costume couple appears. Rashma and Jason. Jason and Rashma, look. Aren't you, um, uh, A little better. Uh, yeah, a little closer. A little closer. But at least they're trying. Oh, I like it. You guys are all dressed up too. But as the party gets underway, it's the host's outfits that are raising eyebrows. The host didn't really show up when it comes to the costume. I think their costumes look a bit more like Madonna in the early 80s than in the 70s. I'm, I'm not entirely sure those are 70s outfits. That's more 80s to me. That's a little bit more banana rama. He's got uh, it. He's the one that's got it. Yeah, he's best. Would you guys like some muscles for shut up? And as everyone is seated on the couch, the hors d'oeuvres reveal themselves. Self-serve bruschetta and steamed mussels in a white wine sauce. So the way to eat a mussel when you're given a bowl of mussels, you take an empty shell and you use your empty shell as the pincers to take the next mussel out. Like that. And eat it. Way too much garlic, too much raw wine. Ordinarily, I, I, I love this marriage. But and I love garlic and I love onions. There's too much of it. The onions are too thick. There's basil in it. Mm -hmm. And the bread is good. Mm. I thought the mussels were tasty. You know what, honestly, the bruschetta was really, really good. Uh, do it your own bruschetta, uh, not my cup of tea. And with the hors d'oeuvres busy digesting, Sharon busts out the evening's first 70s-themed game. So it's called? Penny in a pantyhose. I don't know this game. I've never come across this game before. This penny is going to be at the bottom of the pantyhose. So since we have partners here, there's going to be two pennies. You guys can only use one hand. Do that? No, okay. Oh, 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 Two more pennies if you put this on your head. <laughs> the game itself was kind of fun, I guess. It's kind of a bizarre game. It kind of made me feel like it was one of those cheesy bridal shower games. It's very hot, very 70s. Then Jason and Reshma take the party by surprise. This is for you, and this is for you guys. <laughs> to Sharon and Renu from Reshma and Jason. Wanna be prom queen? Dancing is awesome. Oh, and we've got one as well. No, I do think this is a lovely idea. However... Oh, they're copying them. You're invited to a prom. Three roses are red, violets are blue. Come to our prom, we want you. Wouldn't it have been nicer to have done it when people left? It's like raining on the parade. Probably handed that out a little too early in the party. It's, I don't know, maybe trying to usurp this party. I think they probably could have waited till uh, more towards the end. It might have been in poor taste to give out um, invitations to the next party at the beginning of someone else's party. Back to the kitchen. The appetizer is ready to serve. A classic chicken soup with vegetables and thyme. You guys, please dig in. Oh my god. It's good. Is your soup okay, Jason? Yes, yes. Fine. Sounds like kind of soup you would get from your mom when you had the flu. Hmm. 
I like it. Yeah. I think this is really pleasant. It is actually very nice, and I'll tell you what's making it. It's the fresh herbs. Jesus. The thyme. Best course so far. Mm. I think I would have had a richer broth. The soup was a little bit like the soup I would have at home at my mom's, but I don't know if I would serve that at a dinner party. Out in the kitchen, Renu tries to stay on top of keeping all the wine glasses full. If only she can get the bottle open. I want to see how she opens this wine. I think this will be entertaining. Mm, she didn't cut the foil off. Uh, that must have a cutter on it. It does. Yeah, put it between your legs. Put the, no, put, put, put the little thing down. All right. No! I think I'm getting this. She, she could hurt herself. And voila, it's done. That's how we do it. And the main course is ready to go way ahead of the judge's schedule. But you don't make it three hours in advance and let it sit in a pot, because I'll tell you right now. Oh, it's going to be gloopy. She could unmold that right now and cut into wedges. It looks like buffet pasta. It's cold, cold and gloopy. But it might taste unbelievable. And everyone is about to find out as the main course is served. Chicken fettuccine with portobello mushrooms and basil. I love a good parsley sprig on a plate. Not enough people use parsley anymore. I love parsley. It's the underappreciated <gasps> herb. Wow. I was hungry, but... <laughs> a big portion. You don't have to eat all. <laughs> it looks good, though. Love the parsley. Flavor-wise, it's all there. It just doesn't look good. It's cold, and the noodles are overcooked. It, it, it's actually sad. I would have normally loved this. It'd be a good football it. game kind of pasta dish. Mm. I don't know if it reminds me of the 70s. The pasta was nice. I I'll give them that. Because I thought that maybe the food would follow a 70s theme as well, but it, it really hasn't. Standard everyday stuff. Doesn't fit with the theme. But in the kitchen, it's full steam ahead as the hosts plate dessert number one. Sweet and sour lemon tart. Cool. Sure. Thank you. Do you like it? Oh, gosh, that looks, that just looks nice. It, it should be more limey if it... It's like licking a bar of fat. It just coats your mouth. Oh. You can tell it's wrong because look at that. The crust is too thick. It's, it's too lardy and too thick. The graham cracker is too sweet. I think the filling has got a chalky, greasy texture the to filling, it. I, I'm interested to know what's in the filling. Lard. Shortening. It has no flavor. 1970s. Dessert. What was the wow. dessert of the 70s other than fondue? Black Forest Gatto. Right, Black Forest cake. Cheesecake, actually. Pudding. Pudding. Pineapple upside down cake. Oh my, yes! It was just too rich for me and, and too much. I only had a couple bites because I think that's all I could take. We've got some more uh, little games up our sleeves for you guys to give you a workout. Don't worry. Workout? Yeah, why not? Dessert course number two moves everyone back to the living room. Chocolate fondue with an assortment of mystery fruit. We would pick, there's three sections. You either gotta pick one, two, or three. And you know, close your eyes, stick your stick in there, and you gotta dip it in the fondue. Now, say an item comes out that you do not want to eat that item, you have the option of taking a shot. Everybody close your eyes, no peeking. Bring your hand forward, I'll guide you. And poke at something. Poke at something. Yeah. Open your eyes. Open. Okay. That's your lucky and pick. Your fondue is right there to dip. And, and you, you gotta have, eat it. You have you have to in eat white it. chocolate. Yep. Or you can take a shot. She ate it! She ate it! <laughs> oh, this is like a bad 13-year-old, 14-year-old party. I see what they're trying to do, but it's just badly executed. Uh, the game, close your eyes, stick it in, see what you get, pull it out, stick it in sauce, stick it in your mouth, and, and let's have a wee laugh about it. It got boring and repetitive. You got a tomato to eat. You know what? Not a, not a good combo. Not a good combination. <laughs> love the idea. Love the fact they've got a theme. It's just becoming juvenile, boring, and they're not reading their guests. Because if you look at the guest faces, it's sort of that they're humoring them. They're not really enjoying it. And to wash down the bittersweet fondue follies, 
there's a spot of 70s disco dancing to wrap the party up. One, two, three, go. Three Watch steps to the front, three steps to the back. Clap. <laughs> We're gonna call out a dance move and everyone's gotta do it. The Running Man. Everybody know how to do the Running Man? One, two, three, let's go. <laughs> oh my gosh, this is awesome. Make this stop, please. Please make, make it stop. stop. <laughs> Thank you guys for all coming out. I had an amazing time. I hope you guys did too. I'm a little confused. Very eclectic. Yeah. Unusual with some of the food. For example, building your own bruschetta. <sighs> Icy cold mussels. Groupy <sighs> pasta. It was, it was confused 70s. I'm confused and I was it in the 70s. You took this theme to heart. I think we were the only ones that did. Did you enjoy the food? It was their but, favorite dishes, you know, I appreciate that, but uh, it was in the 70s. What did you think of the 70s party? Four of us turned up in 70s gear, two turned up in party gear, and that was about as 70s as it got. Do you think you're gonna win this? I think we have it covered. I'm dressed to impress. <laughs> Day three, dinner party three, and the judges check out Jason and Reshma's prep for their prom party. Hello! How are you? How are you? How are you? Let the prom begin with a trio of appetizers, including shrimp cocktail with white sauce and steamed asparagus, tomatoes stuffed with herb cream cheese alongside sautéed mushrooms and boiled carrots, and bruschetta. For the main course, there's pan-fried chicken, mixed fresh vegetables and maple Dijon sauce, and mashed potatoes with shallots. And for dessert, there's cheesecake with caramel sauce. First appetizer is a shrimp cocktail in a white sauce. Are they cooked already? Yes. Can I see them? The challenge with these is, yes, they're cooked, but they're when you thaw them, they get all watery. Yeah. Right? So yeah. what you need to do with those, rinse them, and then what I would do is pat them dry, and okay. then ever so slightly maybe season them up a bit before you serve it with that sauce. OK. <gasps> Look, this is the poshest prom party. Thank you. That's gorgeous. <laughs> We're actually going to clear the plates off and fill them in the kitchen and then bring them back. Why are you going to do that? I would collect them all up now mm -hmm. and, and take them into the kitchen. OK. But you have never been to a restaurant where your dinner plates are there waiting for you. We're going now. You're going to get it done in three hours, right? Yes. Yep. <laughs> we hope so. As the judges take their place, Jason preps the hors d'oeuvres and Reshma pours Jason's go juice. How many of these have you had today? He's filling himself with all those energy drinks. These drinks were created for sports people who needed a boost of energy because they were cycling or swimming or rowing. He's just going to get wired and mad. Outside, the first prom couple, Richard and Sandra, arrive. If anybody was going to dress up and embrace this subject, it was these two. Fantastic. Hi. 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 How are you? Oh my gosh, you guys look great. So do, you. so do you. And the hosts ply everyone with a mandatory corsage. See, you've got pink already, so it brings out the color in your oh, eyes. That's right. The final guests show up. Renu in a gown and Sharon in full prom drag. Oh, how elegant. Oh my god, you guys look Hello. great. Uh, hey, come on in. Sharon's mustache is, I guess, cute. Look at this, they brought a big old four pack of energy drinks for uh, Jason. Well, 10 out of 10 for all of them for entering into the spirit of things and dressing up. I don't know about you, but the whole thing about going to prom is you're all excited. Let's have some fun. Do you like prom? Just shake it, that's what you would do with the prom. Yeah! <laughs> and the prom booze gets started with a thud instead of a bang. Here we go. But Sandra and Richard are doing all they can to liven up the party. So I said, well, you might want to get us a box of condoms because we are at prom. We are at prom. <laughs> oh, right. oh. Don't tell my folks. Right. We have a hotel room. <laughs> and Jason's doing all he can to liven up Jason. I've noticed Jason's been sticking to the energy drinks tonight. Back on the couch, Sandra and Richard continue their patter. Richard was cute in his mullet. There's nothing cute about mullet. Yeah, you were. You got to be mullet, did you? I had a mullet. Mm -hmm. You know, these two are great guests, aren't they? They are as Reshma leads everyone to the dinner table. Beautiful table. Yeah, thank yeah. you. 
and the first appetizer gets its table debut. Shrimp cocktail with white sauce and steamed asparagus. I like it, it's good. Can't have this at a prom party. Limp asparagus. Now, what, do you remember the tip I gave on the shrimp? What, were the, what was the tip? You said you got to pat them dry. And season them up. Maybe put a little lemon juice yeah, on them. Yeah, a little lemon juice, a little bit of black pepper. Yeah. Instead, we've got these anemic-looking shrimp that look equally as wilty. The best thing on this plate it's is that sauce. Yeah. The other problem when you eat shrimp like this is it gets stuck in your mustache. Poor young thing. I thought the sauce was bland. I felt like the shrimp needed a little more flavor. In the kitchen, Reshma and Jason put final touches on the next appetizer course. Well, I'm going to give you a little tip on cherry tomatoes, Anthea. Why? You know why his little balls there are falling over? Why? Because he's neglected to cut the bottom off. Yeah, that's true, yeah. Make them flatten, they yeah. won't roll over. And it's ready to serve. Cherry tomatoes stuffed with herb cream cheese alongside sautéed mushrooms and boiled carrots. Acceptable. I like those. I like mushrooms. Cold mushrooms. Those taste like tin mushrooms. Yeah, they do taste like tin mushrooms. A carrot. I prefer the, the, the chicken soup from last night. On the... Oh, yeah, it's way better than this. In fact, these are all the ingredients that should have went into the chicken soup for color. Sorry, not good enough for me for an appetizer. It kind of sucked a little bit. And what's worse, Jason is committing one of Anthea's classic party faux pas. That's what you do when the family around you, you're at the dining table, and you don't have any sort of outside guests. You scrape all the food off them, send it into the kitchen. Next time, you could just put the old garbage bin by the table and just... <laughs> Out in the kitchen, Jason pours himself another. Wow. Have we hit... He's gonna pour another there? one! He's pouring another one! And Reshma starts prepping the third appetizer, but leads with a blunder. Toast that bread, toast the bread, toast the bread. No! We got tomato juice sponges, that's what we have. And their basic bruschetta makes its way to the table. Thank you. Oh, gosh. It's like a cab driver with really bad BO. If they'd put some cheese on it, I might have got away with it. Feel it. I know. It's it crazy. Is. It's soggy. I, it, yeah. Imagine being one of those swans or ducks in a pond and people throw you bread and it falls in the water and you eat it. Yeah. That's exactly what we have. It came out soggy. We did bruschetta. Why did you guys do bruschetta? Don't do bruschetta. I'm sorry. That was our theme. Back to the kitchen. Jason decides he needs more than an energy drink shot to help him with the main. Reshma. Reshma. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> Seems to be a lot of shouting from the kitchen when Jason needs Reshma. Extremely fast for the sauce, please. Yep. Look at this. When you cook chicken breast like this, mm -hmm. when it is so thin and so lean, you have to be very, 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 very careful. Otherwise, it can easily dry out. And we're left with chewy, rubbery, dry chicken. I always do the water dance on the pan. A little water in your finger, and it would bubble dance on the top. It's hot enough. Not ready. Not ready. At the table. I lost the mustache. I waxed it. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> but back in the kitchen, there's nothing to laugh about. Look at this. Look at this. At the moment, this feels like the sort of meal that a busy mom would throw on because you really haven't got time to do anything. And the main gets plated and delivered to the guests. Thank you. Grilled chicken with mixed fresh vegetables and maple Dijon sauce, and mashed potatoes with shallots. Ta-da! Oh. Well, you know what? You can't always judge a book by its cover. Well, I'm judging this book. Let's try this. I find them a bit mushy. I don't find them fluffy. I don't find them light. I don't find them flavorful. Raw onions, raw corn. I don't taste the maple syrup. I don't taste the Dijon. No. Try the shoe. It's really dry. 
Let's give it another go. Maybe we need potato, vegetable, and chicken. The three combo. That doesn't work either. No taste to it. It was very dry for me. The chicken was like a base moment. With the main wrapping up and the party clock counting down, it's time for the team to prep dessert. How do you, like, they're wrecking everything. Like, everyone knows when you slice a cheesecake, hot water hot slides through like butter. Lick your finger while you're doing it, too. Why not? And the caramel drizzled cheesecake is served. That looks yeah. delicious. I do make a very good cheesecake myself. Mm -hmm. That's really yummy. It's light. Yes, it is. It is light, fluffy cheesecake. They should just serve dessert. Was their best dish. It was an amazing dessert. And what prom party would be complete without at least a little bit of last minute dancing? <laughs> what is this? They're trying. And the party comes to a party favor finish. I'm gonna say it. We've had food really bad, not once, not <laughs> twice, but three times. And neither of the parties have been brilliant. They've had their moments, but nothing has been consistent. No. <laughs> Only two people are going to take away the bragging rights to say, I am the dinner party war champion. And they're also going to have over a thousand dollars of cookware to play with. But more importantly, they're going to hold up high this trophy. Our first couple, Sandra and Richard, please step forward. Before we tell you what we think of your dinner party, let's see what your guests thought of your evening. Yes, it's warm. Yes, you're going to sweat, but at least go and change your shirt. Everything was just very basic for me. Not There was no wow factor to it. The bitter ballad was actually quite nice. Um, I didn't really like the fact that she said that she didn't make it. Let's go through your menu. Your first course, fish chowder. I didn't think it was enough chowder. I didn't think it was thick. I didn't think it was creamy. And it had a very pungent, fishy aroma. Now, your main course, fiddleheads. There was absolutely no flavor. Your tortiere, your meat pie. You listen to me where you put the onions in the filling. The crust, though, was pretty good. Desserts. You had that almond cake, which was okay. The strobe waffle was my favorite. Your little pancakes. I don't know if it was appropriate for dessert. I would have loved to have it, say, with breakfast, but they were very tasty, and I actually thought your dessert was the best course of the night. I was telepathically trying to get through to your wife to say, take him upstairs, change his shirts. I was drowning in your sweat. And sadly, so is everybody else. But the way you welcomed your guests at the door with your clogs and your hats set the tone. And then, of course, we had kissing the cod, which was, I know, with the mackerel. But it's fantastic. I love it. it. You know, a little bit hit and miss, but it's you. Renu and Sharon, please step forward. The host didn't really show up when it comes to the costume. Do it your own prosciutto, uh, not my cup of tea. I only had a couple bites, because I think that's all I could take. Your first course, your soup, made from scratch. It was OK, but it was chicken soup with some vegetables. I probably would have liked to see a bit more life punched into it. Now your main course, the chicken with the portobello mushroom. It was too big of a portion. The cheese was all stuck together, and the pasta was overcooked. It was cold, not a good course. Dessert. Sweet sour tarts. I'm not sure what the sweet or the sour bit was. The graham cracker crust, a little thick. The filling itself almost had the consistency of, say, lard. I preferred the fondue, but I thought you could have pushed it a bit more because it was the one element of your dinner party that suited the theme of 1970s. The theme was a great theme. It's the 70s. But it sort of lost its way. And it, it sort of, you did a bit of the 70s, then you both look like you come from the 80s. And then it sort of fizzled. I think if you're going to have a theme, you stick to the theme and you follow it right the way through. Our last couple, Jason and Rashma. Sorry, not good enough for me for an appetizer. Seems to be a lot of shouting from the kitchen when Jason needs Rashma, so maybe a little harsh. Don't do bruschetta. I'm sorry, that was our theme. 
You started off with a shrimp cocktail. The sauce was very good. Loved the flavor of the horseradish, thought that the thickness was right. The shrimp, I couldn't decide if the shrimp or if the asparagus were more limp. The only thing good on that plate was the sauce. Main course, your mashed potatoes. You mash them, and you mash them, and you mash them. Then you added big chunks of green onion, and you kept adding salt. And then finally, when you had it elevated on the plate, you smooshed it down with that chicken breast, which you managed to cook and cook and cook. The vegetable topping, I think the intent was there. A lot of onions, wow. A lot of raw onions, they weren't cooked completely. However, dessert, best course. The cheesecake, it was light, it was fluffy, it wasn't overly sweet, it wasn't filling like some cheesecakes are. Very good. I have never been to a prom because in England, when I was growing up and leaving school, we didn't do proms. And I'm still not sure if I've been to a prom. I think you tried to give yourself too many things to do, and in the end, you spread yourself too thinly. Now you've heard everything we have to say, we're going to give you your scores. Sandra and Richard, did you do Dutch food justice? Your score on food, five out of 10. The jig is up. I'm going to score you five out of 10. Which gives you a combined score of 10 out of 20. Renu and Sharon, your score on food, six out of 10. You were in the wrong decade. I'm going to give you four out of 10. Which gives you a combined score of 10 out of 20. Jason and Reshma, your score on food, five out of 10. Which means Jason and Reshma need a six for presentation to win. Prom, not so pretty. I'm also going to give you five out of 10. Which gives you a combined score of 10 out of 20. You all have 10 out of 20. But somebody has to win Dinner Party Wars. So I've got one point I can do something with and announce somebody as the winner. So I'm going to award this one point to the person who evokes the spirit of dinner party wars. And I'm going to give that one point and make Sandra and Richard the winners of dinner party wars. Congratulations. <laughs> We are all winners in this competition. Definitely. So it was worthwhile for both of us. It was great, it was phenomenal. We had a really good time together. Yeah, very enjoyable. We had uh, a lot of laughs and with a lot of great memories. Like a premonition, like we knew we were gonna win. King and queen. King and queen. I now crown you dinner party war king. <laughs>